Today, we're gonna to be talking about musicians' new stance on blocking posthumous albums from being released after their death. Posthumous or posthumous? Oh my God, did I say it? Oh, sheesh. Okay, this is gonna be a problem. Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome back to another Thread Daily. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the new trend of artists blocking albums from being released after their death. Last week, rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, and drummer Anderson Pack took to Instagram to show off his new tattoo. On his forearm is a written request that none of his demos should be released in the event of his untimely death. Shortly after, singer and songwriter Lana Del Rey took to Instagram to share the photo and said that she'll be placing the same request in her will, making it a legal requirement. Now, it may seem like a dark thing to be thinking about while in the peak of your music career, but it's not uncommon for artists to see an increase in notoriety, especially after they die, sometimes more than they experienced while they were alive. The premature death of prominent musicians such as Mac Miller, Pop Smoke, XXX Tentacion, and Lil Peep. Oh, who did I miss out? Juice World. I like Juice World. I can't leave him out. Have seen posthumous albums claiming a top 10 spot on the charts for every week in the last two years. Whew. Do you know how hard it was to say that line? That was. On one hand, this offers a sense of closure for fans who wondered what the artist had coming next. But questions of whether these albums can be considered authentic in terms of overall sound and message have led to a series of controversies surrounding their release. Perhaps the most obvious speculation is cash grabs. Many share the view that posthumous albums are a way for greedy labels to make money off an artist's unfinished work for years to come. A good example of this is Pop Smoke, whose unique and recognizable sound on his album, Meet the Woo 2, rose him to global fame just months before he was murdered in his own home. Pop left behind hundreds of demos, and since then, his label has released two posthumous albums on his behalf. Both albums are littered with features from other high-profile artists in the rap game. In fact, only six out of 30 songs on the second posthumous album are by Pop alone. To many, this seemed like an obvious cash grab, with many claiming that the album couldn't demonstrate Pop Smoke's real talent or career vision. And while collaborations with 50 Cent and Lil TJ felt natural, other collaborations with Dua Lipa felt oversaturated and kind of random. Which brings us to the next question. Is this what the artist would have wanted? Oh yeah, this is where I get emotional. Although late musicians leave behind archives full of demos and other audio clips, they remain demos because most of them aren't deemed ready for public listening. For this reason, a posthumous album can come across as a set of half-hearted, unrefined ideas that have the potential to diminish an artist's legacy. That's not to say a good posthumous album can't be made. When completed carefully by somebody close to the artist, like in the case of Mac Miller's Circles, a posthumous album can tie a beautifully neat bow around an artist's life work. But it's still easy to imagine the ways Mac might have changed circles to fit his vision better. Taking these factors into account, it's understandable why posthumous albums are met with equal parts skepticism and anticipation from fans and critics. Music, like any other form of original art, is deeply personal to the person making it. If an artist didn't intend to share this piece of work with the world, did we really earn the right to hear it? deep. Lana Del Rey and Anderson Pack have made it very clear they want full direction over what is shared with the world. As the trend of posthumous albums grows, it wouldn't be surprising to see other artists do the same to protect what's rightfully their own. And can we really blame them? Let me know what you think in a comment down below. And if you'd like to learn more, head over to thread.com to read my article. As always, like, share, subscribe, and watch this space for more news on social change. A posthumous album can tie a beautifully neat bow around an artist's life, life, life's work. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I can't say it. This is supposed to be the easy part. Like, why am I so extra? Elliot. Yeah. I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs>